What is a meniscus tear of the knee and what does it mean for you? I'm Dr. David Geyer, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine specialist. I provide education and commentary on sports and exercise injuries, injury treatments and injury prevention for athletes and active people so that you can stay healthy and perform your best. Meniscus tears are one of the most common injuries in all of sports medicine, really in all of orthopedic surgery. What this is, this is the C-shaped shock absorber and you have one on each side of the knee, the inside or the medial side of the knee, the side close to the midline, and on the lateral side of the knee, the outside of the knee, you have one on each side of each knee. It sits between the femur or the thigh bone and the tibia, the shin bone. It's a shock absorber. At the end of the day, it's got some other function, uh, stability and things like that. But its biggest role is to serve as a shock absorber of the knee. It takes a lot of the stress with repetitive impact with things like running and playing sports and things like that. Now, it's really common to suffer a meniscus tear through some sort of twisting mechanism. That's why we see it in sports medicine so often because soccer, you know, tennis players, football players, basketball, as they plant their foot and go to change directions, they twist the femur on the tibia and you can catch that meniscus and cause it to tear. Very, very common injury. You can do it other ways. As you get older, you may not even remember you know, what you did to do it. Or you may just remember, you know, squatting to pick something up and then a few days later you started noticing this really uncomfortable sharp pain on the side or to the back of the knee, uh, you know, either again on the outside or on the inside and, and toward the back of your knee and it bothers you just with, you know, deep squatting or twisting motions. Very, very common. A lot of times you can walk and do straight ahead activities even though you have a meniscus tear and not have any pain but when you go to do twisting motions as simple as turning to change directions that may cause pain if you go see your doctor or an orthopedic surgeon a lot of times we can suspect this just based on talking to you how you describe how it happened and where your pain is and when it comes on but then doing some physical exam tests as well. You know, we check range of motion and all the ligaments and things like that, but there are some tests that we can do to test for a meniscus tear. A lot of times we'll bend the knee all the way up and rotate the tibia and try to see if it hurts right along the joint line uh, of the uh, medial joint line where the medial meniscus is or the lateral joint line where the lateral meniscus is. We'll get x-rays a lot of times just to make sure you don't have any fractures, which probably not real likely. More importantly, what we're looking for is arthritis changes, narrowing of the joint space, which can really complicate uh, not just the diagnosis, but the treatment. So we usually get x-rays for that. Having said that, x-rays don't show a meniscus. They only show bones, soft tissue structures, not just the meniscus, but ligaments, tendons, cartilage, muscle, things like that you don't see on x-ray. So if we're worried about a meniscus tear, we might order an MRI to look for the meniscus tear. An MRI is very, very good at demonstrating that somebody has a meniscus tear. Now, if you have a meniscus tear, the challenge with that is that those very likely don't heal. And so, you know, in people, especially 50 and under, but sometimes 55 and 60 and under, where you don't have arthritis changes, but you have a meniscus tear, it's really unpredictable how likely things like activity modification and anti-inflammatory medications and physical therapy and even injections how much that's actually going to help because the meniscus tear has very little blood supply so it very often doesn't heal on its own and so in people that can't do what they want be it play a sport or just do an exercise they want it may be even doing their job at work if they can't do it because of pain from a meniscus tear a lot of times we'll talk about surgery to treat it and there's two major types of surgeries there's partial meniscectomy, which is taking these little tiny scissors and shaver and trim out the meniscus tear, and a meniscus repair or sewing it back together. In the next two videos in this series that I'm doing on injuries and surgeries in sports and exercise, the next two of those will cover those. One will be on 
partial meniscectomy or trimming out the tear and one will be on sewing it back together, a meniscal repair. So if you're watching this on Facebook, you may want to go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go to the injuries and surgeries section and you'll find these videos. Uh, or go to my website, drdavidgeyer.com. There's a link in the comments below this video and you can find these videos. I think they'll be really helpful if you're facing a meniscus tear, if you're looking at surgery for a meniscus tear. I hope these videos are helpful. If you like videos like this and you want more information on sports and exercise, injuries, injury treatments, and injury prevention, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click the subscribe button on the upper right corner of the page. You'll get these videos delivered a couple times a week directly to you. If you've had a meniscus tear, I would love to hear your experience. So in the comments below this video, share your experience, how it was diagnosed, if you underwent surgery. I would love to read it and I know people all over the world would love to hear what you have to say as well. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Again, check out the surgery videos about meniscus tears uh, that are coming up very soon and I look forward to seeing you right here next time.